in some uh, concerning, perhaps, but not necessarily surprising news for the vegan community, the vegan meat company Beyond Meat has said its sales have collapsed by nearly a third in the second quarter of the year as its customers are looking for cheaper alternatives. Rather than rethinking their recipes, Beyond Meat is firmly directing blame to the cost of living crisis. Yet why would vegans want to pretend that they're eating meat? This has always puzzled me. But William, I can understand why people may have a moral objection to meat. I don't, but I understand why. But if you do, why do you want to pretend that your tofu is a lamb cutlet? Well, I think it's partly because people don't want to feel that they're totally isolated. I mean, if you go to a restaurant, if there's, let's say, a fake lamb chop or some fake chicken, then perhaps you can feel part of that, that group by ordering a sort of fake version of that food. But I, I actually think that you know, the, the good, old-fashioned, natural vegan, who, as you say, is someone who gives up meat, dairy, animal-related products for ethical reasons, wants to be a natural eater. And that's about good, sustainable, locally produced food, cultivated plants, forage food, etc. And I think it's more the kind of urban politicised vegan who is keen on badging themselves vegan that's the sort of person who's buying Beyond Meat, the sort of person who's buying um, fake meat produced by a 3D printing machine in Israel that is so far away from, you know, the visceral, spiritual, emotional things that we love when we eat food. So it essentially becomes a fashion statement about saying who and what you are rather than being something that is driven by your internal moral compass. It, it, it's very much a fascist statement. Now, obviously, I, wouldn't, you know, I'm, I, I can't speak for, for any vegan, but I think there's a lot of people who do uh, plough that furrow and also make what I think are slightly dodgy claims about the climate, um, as well as it being a politicised sort of you know, moral issue. And you know, obviously, I, you know, I have some issues with that. And I think that you know, we should try and eat food that's naturally produced. And, you know, I saw something on Twitter I remember, last year and it had um, a recipe for a, for a steak, meat, and it had a recipe for one of these fake burgers, fake meats, which has God knows how many different ingredients in them. And I'm absolutely convinced this stuff is not good for you. It is the, it is the, the worst end of ultra-processed food, which is, from a sensible, healthy point of view, about as far away as you want to be from from being, so, you know, a so sensible your eater. Your message as one of the country's leading food writers is that you should eat natural food. And if you're if you're vegan, eat things that haven't been processed that you may have known are grown locally or indeed even grown yourself. Likewise, eat meat that is um, re produced and reared locally. Totally. I mean, you know, if you're lucky enough, I mean, you know, it's easier if you live in a rural area because you can support local producers. But you know, there are more and more local producers, f food um, fairs and, and independent farmers markets appearing in urban areas. If you really think about your food and question you know, your butcher, you can find very good local produce. And I think that you know, the vegan argument should follow that same sensible well, point of view.